Hi, I'm Bruce from SNS Cycle. In this video, we're going to cover the basics of jetting an SNS Super E or G carburetor. We already covered the initial setup of the carb in the first video in this series called SNS Super E and G Carb Setup. So we'll assume that this carb is set up properly and we'll just get on with the jetting process. SNS carbs aren't pre jetted for your bike from the factory. Like this carb we've just installed on this bike, they come with a best guess jetting combination that in many cases works out fine. However, you may need to fine tune your carb for your particular bike. Factors that affect the jetting range from engine modifications such as exhaust, cams, headwork, increased displacement to environmental conditions like altitude. Fortunately, it's a pretty simple process and we'll soon have this bike on the road with more power than before. We're going to tune this 1999 Harley Dyna on our Dynojet 250i chassis dynamometer. This is sort of a luxury that not everybody can afford, but not to worry. You can definitely tune your carb without a dyno, and we'll talk about that as we go along. However, the air-fuel ratio meters on this dyno make it much easier, and of course for this video it's a lot easier to demonstrate the procedure on the bike that's not cruising down the highway. Typically a shop using a dyno would use an exhaust gas analyzer with a sniffer tube shoved up the exhaust pipe. However, for this video, we'll be using wideband oxygen sensors and welded in bungs in the pipes. This lets us demonstrate a few things a little easier, but the tuning process is the same. We have Aaron standing by to help us with the dyno work, so let's get started. First thing to do is to run the engine until it's up to operating temperature. If you jet your carb with a cold motor, it's going to run too rich when it's fully warmed up. While we're warming up the engine, let's take a look and see what's inside a Super E carb. This is the intermediate jet. Old timers call this the pilot jet. The intermediate jet's job is to control fuel delivery from idle to about 2500 RPM. It also supplies fuel to the idle circuit, which is why you need to readjust the idle mixture screw whenever you change the intermediate jet. As the throttle plate opens from the idle position, it exposes this series of little holes called the intermediate pattern to manifold vacuum, and the fuel from the intermediate jet begins to flow from these holes into the airstream. As the plate opens farther, more holes are exposed so more fuel is delivered. Once we run out of holes, the main jet takes over. And this is the main jet. As the name implies, it supplies larger amounts of fuel for higher RPM. Under normal driving conditions, it begins to deliver fuel at about 2500 RPM. But it will come in much earlier if the throttle is cracked open at lower RPM. It takes fuel to make power, and the main jet is where it comes from. The main jet screws into this emulsion tube. The holes in the side of the emulsion tube allow air from the main air bleed to mix with the fuel from the main jet to improve atomization. This is the main jet air bleed. The function of the air blade is to provide air for the emulsion tube and to control when the main jet begins to feed fuel. On earlier SNS carbs, this was a fixed 40 thousandths orifice, but Super E and G carbs manufactured after 2004 are machined to accept an SNS main jet to serve as a replaceable orifice. If a larger jet is installed, it will make the main jet come in at a higher RPM. This is the accelerator pump push rod. When you open the throttle, this rod pushes down on the pump diaphragm in the carburetor bowl, and fuel sprays out of this nozzle to give the engine better off-idle throttle response. When the bowl is assembled on the carb, the nozzle sticks into the throat of the carburetor and the fuel is sprayed directly into the airstream. If you remove the air cleaner cover, you can see the fuel coming out of the accelerator nozzle when you crack the throttle. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the dyno, the engine is warmed up so we can start checking the intermediate system. We'll turn off the accelerator pump so we can evaluate the intermediate jet by itself without the additional fuel from the accelerator pump. We're removing the air cleaner just to make it easy for you to see. Turn the pump adjusting screw clockwise until it seats lightly. We'll put a moderate load on the motor with the eddy current brake on the dyno to simulate driving conditions and we'll do some easy roll-ons to see how the engine responds. The air-fuel ratio meter shows that the engine is running a little rich, but it actually runs pretty well. The air-fuel ratio is about 11.5, and ideally we'd like to see it between 12 and 13. This number is the ratio of air to fuel by weight, so a higher number is leaner and a lower number is richer. 
If you were jetting this car by driving the bike on the road, you'd probably come to the same conclusion eventually, but it wouldn't be as quick as looking at the readout on the air fuel ratio meter. On the street, this bike might just feel a little sluggish and the fuel mileage would not be as good. To make the mixture leaner, we'll install the next smaller sized intermediate jet. In order to do that, we needed to drop the bowl of the carb to access the jet. And it's a lot easier to get at if we remove the air cleaner. As a note, a slightly rich air fuel mixture will not affect performance as much as running a mixture slightly too lean. Unburned fuel will just be expelled for the exhaust, but unused oxygen in the exhaust means that you could have burned more fuel and made more power. Jets are marked so it's easy to see what size you have. This jet is marked .0295, so it has a 29.5 thousandths metering orifice. The metering orifice is this hole that goes through the center of the jet. The four holes around the outside are air bleeds. We need to install the next smaller jet, which has a 28 thousandths diameter orifice. We generally want to use the smallest intermediate jet that will give us acceptable performance. Too large a jet will result in reduced fuel economy and will actually reduce performance and make the engine sluggish. It's important to do these jetting tests with the air cleaner in place because it does affect the air fuel mixture. In addition, the air cleaner serves as an air box and a source of neutral pressure air for the carburetor's bowl vent. Anytime you change the intermediate jet, you must readjust the idle mixture screw because fuel for the idle circuit comes from the intermediate jet. With the engine warm and idling, turn the idle mixture screw counterclockwise until the engine becomes too rich and begins to stumble. Then, turn the idle mixture screw clockwise until the engine speeds up and keep turning until it slows down because it's too lean. Next, turn the idle mixture screw back to a point halfway in between the too rich and too lean points. We do another easy low RPM pull to see if the smaller intermediate jet did the trick. The air fuel ratio display shows that we're where we need to be with the air fuel ratio of 12.5 to 13. So we're done with the intermediate jetting. We can now adjust the accelerator pump. Adjust the accelerator pump by cracking the throttle at idle and turning the adjusting screw out a quarter of a turn at a time until it responds well to the throttle. You should only adjust the accelerator pump after the intermediate jetting is complete and don't give it more accelerator pump than it needs. At this point, the engine does not throttle well. But with every quarter turn of the adjusting screw, it gets a little better. And a little better still. We're getting pretty close here. One or two more ought to do it. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And we're just about there. One more quarter turn and we've got it. Before we move on to the main jet, we're going to show how this bike would run with the intermediate system jetted way too lean and way too rich. First, we've installed a 25 thousandths intermediate jet. We know it's too lean, but we want to demonstrate how a very lean engine acts. This is typical behavior for an engine that's jetted too lean. It will misfire and spit back or cough in the carb on easy acceleration or at steady speed. Sometimes it will just surge or hunt, as it is sometimes called, at a steady speed at part throttle. Now let's jet this engine with a really large intermediate jet to show how our really rich condition looks. We're installing a 40 thousandths intermediate jet. With a large intermediate jet in the carb, the engine runs sluggishly. 
Note that the exhaust has a dull sound. On the street, you would notice a lack of response, black smoke from the exhaust, possibly a backfire in the pipes, and really lousy gas mileage. Let's put the correct intermediate jet back in so we can proceed to the main jet. To test the main jetting, we do a full throttle rollout. We're doing a pull on the dyno, but if you don't have a dyno, you would do this on the drag strip or possibly an open stretch of highway. The engine seems to be running strong, but let's see what the air fuel ratio is. The air fuel ratio is a little low, showing slight rich condition at just under 12. A lot of tuners who are jetting this carb on the street would conclude that this is good enough, and for all practical purposes, it is. The super carbs are pretty forgiving and will run well as long as you are not more than a step or two from the optimum jetting. But we know we can make it better, so let's lean out the main system by installing a main jet with a smaller orifice. Before we change the main jet, you may notice the AFR trace shows the mixture going really lean just after the throttle is cracked open for a power run. That's because when the throttle is opened that quickly, there's a slight delay before the engine vacuum can begin pulling fuel into the airstream. This is a typical characteristic of carbureted engines. Changing the main jet is a lot simpler since we can get at it through the bowl drain plug. It isn't necessary to remove the air cleaner, but we've done it here to make it easier to see what we're doing. Loosen the plug with a 5 8 inch wrench. Be sure to have a container ready to catch the gasoline when you remove the plug. This bike has a vacuum operated petcock, but if you have a manual version, be sure to shut the fuel off because this little container won't hold the whole tank. You can use a short stubby screwdriver to remove and install SNS main jets, but we have this handy little main jet tool that's even easier to use. The jet we just removed is marked with a .072, so the orifice size is 72 thousandths. Experience tells us that we need to lean out the main system by installing a jet a couple of sizes smaller. We'll install a 66 thousandths jet. The main jet tool makes installing a jet really easy because it holds the jet securely as you install it. Just stick the jet up into the drain hole and turn the T-handle to screw it into the emulsion tube. Replace the bowl plug and air cleaner and we're ready to try it again. Another pull on the dyno shows us that we're pretty well dialed in. The bike ran about the same. The torque and horsepower are pretty much line on line. However, the air fuel ratio is better at around 13. So we have the main jet pretty well dialed in but there's a slight dip in the torque curve that we can attribute to a low restriction performance exhaust system. The air fuel curve shows that the mixture got a little rich between 3000 and 4000 RPM. We can lean that out somewhat by increasing the size of the main jet air bleed. The stock air bleed is 40 thousandths of an inch. We'll replace it with a 46 thousandths air bleed. That will make the main jet come in a little later and make it a little leaner as well. Back to the dyno to get the proof. It appears that the air fuel ratios are closer to the optimum 12 in the 3000 to 4000 RPM range, and we did pick up a little torque, so it looks like we are pretty much dialed in. Like we did with the intermediate system, we're going to show how an engine runs when the main system is really jetted way off. So to show you how an engine runs with too small a main jet, we're rejetting this car with a main jet that we know will cause it to run very lean. As you can see, lean jetting makes the engine break up and backfire or cough back in the carburetor. Don't do this at home because you run the risk of smoking your motor. An overly lean condition produces a lot of heat, especially under full throttle. And if you run it very long like that, it could just ruin your day.
And of course, this video would not be complete without showing how an engine reacts when it's jetted too rich. We put a main jet in this carb about 16 thousandths larger than the optimum to show what happens. The engine is sluggish and does not accelerate well. The dull sound of the exhaust is often described as blubbery. Note the black smoke from the exhaust. Sometimes an overly rich engine will backfire in the pipes. A lot of riders tend to jet a little on the fat side thinking it'll make more power, but it really won't. You'll make less power than a correctly jetted engine. A slightly rich engine may run smoother because it won't miss with all that fuel, unless it's rich enough to follow the spark plugs. However, the fuel mileage will suffer. Slightly fat jetting really becomes a problem when a bike has been jetted a little rich at low altitudes and is then driven to a higher altitude. The thinner air requires less fuel, so a bike that runs okay at sea level will really run rich in the mountains. A correctly jetted engine will have very little problem with all but the most extreme altitude variations. We've reinstalled the correct jetting and are taking this bike out for a test ride to confirm our jetting results. It's a good idea to test ride the bike after you tune on the dyno to double check your results. Looks like everything's okay. We've just gone through the basic jetting procedure for an SNS Super ERG carb. As you can see, it's not really very complicated. And most of the time, it's all you need to get you on the road with a smile on your face. However, you may run across an engine that's harder to dial in. So if you have a problem child in your hands, take a look at the next video in this series called Special Jetting Problems. Please note that if you don't have the tools or skills to perform these procedures, we encourage you to consult a professional mechanic to jet your carb for you. You don't have to look any further than your local SNS dealer, hopefully the guy you bought it from. You can find your nearest SNS dealer by going to our website at www.sscycle.com and clicking on the dealer locator. We hope this video helps you get the job done, and we hope to see you on the road, not on the side of it. Thank you.